Sakit na ng ganito ako. Sabit-sabit yung mga baby hairs ko. The health department confirms the local transmission of the highly contagious Delta variant. One million more doses of Sinovac shots are set to arrive this morning. Flooding brought about by the non-stop monsoon rains made several areas in the metro unpassable. Typhoon Fabian continues to draw in monsoon rains as it moves slowly near the northern border of the Philippine area of responsibility. We'll give you the latest on the weather straight from Pagasa. And today is the opening ceremonies of the Tokyo Olympics. We'll give you the lowdown of what to expect. Fast, focused, and fearless. Here's everything you need to know as you jumpstart your day. I'm Charles Lejano. Kicking off today's newscast with the health department, confirming that there is now local transmission of the Delta variant in the Philippines. This comes after finding that the clusters of the Delta variant cases were linked to other local cases. And despite this, Health Secretary Francisco Duque III insists that safeguards are in place to contain the spread of the more transmissible COVID-19 variant. Uh, we are... Uh doing everything to improve our response, to increase our capacities, as I have said, you know, more beds, more IC beds, uh, more oxygen tanks. The DOH added that they will rely on scientific evidence when deciding whether quarantine restrictions need to be escalated. For now, the interagency task force is reviewing the protocols in allowing children to go outdoors. Recall that just last month, Malacanang had been optimistic that a mask-free Christmas could be possible this year. We are, we are not recommending to remove the mask until such time that we have vaccinated everybody. Uh, we can relax. But for now, though we have a better Christmas, we will still be in uh, abundance of, of, of uh, we call it abundance of precaution. And it seems like we're back at the start of the pandemic, with government officials scrambling to contain a variant of the virus while dealing with the severe lack of contact tracers. Mobile journalist Jacob Lazaro gives us the front seat to the story. The country is already grappling with the threat of the more infectious Delta variant, but authorities now face another complication. The Interior Department is now scrambling to fund some 15,000 contact tracers whose contracts are about to expire. So nangangala po tayo ng pondo ngayon para mapondohan itong extension ng mga kontrata ng ating mga contract holders. Interior Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya was more optimistic. Malaya tells One News that they expect funds to be released by the Office of the President to extend the contracts until December. Last month, lawmakers were pleading with Malacanang to call a special session so that Congress could extend the validity of the Bayanihan II funds beyond June 30. Part of the funds had been for hiring of contact tracers. The plea fell on deaf ears. Some 9 billion in Bayanihan II funds reverted back to the National Treasury. Okta Research Fellow Guido David stresses the need to continue the hiring of contact tracers to fight the Delta variant. It's going to be a problem if the surge happens and limited yung contact tracing natin. Ideally, government should be able to identify 20 to 37 close contacts of every COVID patient. David says we're only identifying a third of that target. 
Right, malayo ta. So, one is to 37. Kung maging 3,000 cases, one is to two na lang. Useless in contact tracing because essentially, you're just contacting yung immediate family. Ang ating target is supposed to be 90 to 95 percent. Nag-average lang po ng 30, 35 percent yung ating malokal na gobyerno. Last year, government allotted 5 billion pesos for the hiring of 50,000 contact tracers. But when COVID cases declined at the start of 2020, the number of contact tracers was cut back to 15,000. With government still scrambling to find money to renew their contracts, even that number is now in question. I'm Jacob Lazaro and we are One News. Another 1 million doses of Sinovac vaccines are expected to arrive in the country this morning. That's after 1.5 million doses of the Chinese-made shots were delivered to the Philippines just yesterday. Once this latest batch of Sinovac vaccine lands in the country, we will have received a total of more than 31 million COVID-19 vaccines from different brands. We'll be back with more stories after a quick break. Keep it here on One News. You're still watching One News Now. I'm Charles Lejano. Several parts of Metro Manila and nearby areas were inundated on Thursday amid the incessant rains brought about by the southwest monsoon. Some Paranaque residents had to wait for the flood to subside at SM Suka before coming home. This as needy floods made it difficult for cars and commuters to travel safely. On the other hand, the entire Zapote Junction in Las Piñas was rendered unpassable by the downpour as late as 6 p.m. last night. The city's major road also experienced gutter-deep floods due to the rain. That's why the SM Center Las Piñas opened its doors to stranded residents. Meanwhile, commuters had to face not just floods, but also heavy traffic along Aguinaldo Highway due to the nonstop rain. Meanwhile, up north, several families had to flee their homes from various barangays in Quezon City amid the incessant rain. Bonnie Avenue Corner Ortigas in Mandaluyong was also flooded due to the monsoon rains, but this did not seem to face some children who were seen happily playing in the rain. Over in Marikina, Mayor Marcy Teodoro personally oversaw the situation in the city. And as of 5 a.m. today, the Marikina River remains at a normal level of 13.4 meters. Meanwhile, various roads in the city of Manila were also inundated due to the rain. These included parts of Quirino Avenue, Taft Avenue, San Andres, and Pedro Hill. Typhoon Fabian maintains its slow-moving pace over the sea south of Miyako Islands in Japan. To give us more details, we have Raymond Ordinario now joining us live from the Pag-asa Weather Forecasting Center. Uh, good morning. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, good morning. Hi, Raymond. All right. Uh, do you expect Typhoon Fabian to uh, start picking up speed soon? Uh, Typhoon Fabian is still expected to exit our area of responsibility by tomorrow and it still uh, doesn't affect, uh, directly affect uh, most parts of the country except the Batanes and Mabuyan Islands where our tropical second wind signal number one is still raised. Right, could you tell us whether there's uh, still tropical cyclone wind signals raised in, uh, in which areas these are? Yes, sir. The uh, Batanes and the Babuyan Group of Islands uh, already have the tropical second wind signal as this uh, uh, Typhoon Fabian is still moving um, on the northwest direction, uh, west-northwest direction, and expected to exit our area of responsibility either by tomorrow or Sunday morning. Right, Raymond, we are experiencing some heavy rain. Uh, we have been experiencing some heavy rain over the past few days. Could you tell us which areas uh, stand to experience the same today? So for yeah, for the heavy rains that is brought by our southwest monsoon, it's still expected the uh, monsoon rains over Metro Manila, the Ilocos region, uh, provinces of Benguet, Abra, Zambales, Bataan, Tarlac, Pampanga, Bulacan, Rizal, Laguna, Cavite, Batangas, 
Mindoro provinces and northern Palawan, including the Kalamian and Kalayaan Islands. So those are areas that is still expected to have uh, rains with some uh, with uh, moderate to heavy rains. Well, thank you for those updates. That was Pag-asa weather forecaster Raymond Ordinario. More positive COVID-19 cases are being reported among athletes and personnel who took part in the Tokyo Olympics. Among them includes a Filipino coach who was confirmed to be, to be positive for the coronavirus just one day prior to opening. Gretchen Ho with the details. The Philippine Olympic Committee is sending home a coach who tested positive for COVID-19 in Japan. POC President Bambol Tolentino said that the coach underwent confirmatory nasopharyngeal RT-PCR tests. After the result, be it uh, negative or positive, we have to sacrifice uh, him and to let uh, him go. Further investigations will be made to determine who will be classified as close contacts. By the Olympics definition, a close contact is someone who has spent at least 15 minutes with a positive case. He or she should be within the one meter distance and without a face mask. Even if you are in the same unit, no, you should always wear your mask. A close contact athlete will still be allowed to compete though following a series of negative daily tests. But enhanced countermeasures may be required such as minimized contact with others and the use of a private room. As of now, 16 of our 19 athletes are billeted in seven rooms inside the athletes' village, except for golfers Yuka Sasso, Bianca Pagdanganan, and Juvik Pagunsan, whose venue is two hours away. Tolentino has assured the public that this won't affect the Philippine contingent's morale. We decided na huwag nang magparade ang athletes, except for the two flag bearers and the six officials. Ayaw na natin mag-take risk pa na magalala. Keep on praying na safe ang ating uh, uh, athletes and uh, their coaches and their officials and team. Gretchen Ho, we are One News. After a year-long delay, the Tokyo Olympics is finally kicking off today. The opening ceremonies will take place at the National Stadium which will also host a track and field competition and some football events after just opening last year. As laid out in the Olympic Charter, the ceremonies include the entry of the host nation's head of state and the singing of Japan's national anthem, followed by the parade of athletes and an artistic program complete with performances. The country's official flag bearers, boxer Yumi Marshall and judoka Kiyomi Watanabe will be sporting Rahul Laurel when they march along with six officials from Team Philippines. Overall, this year's games will look different than usual as spectators were banned from physically attending the games. But tonight, Tokyo will still be consumed by pageantry and glamour as more than 200 nations and their athletes will descend upon the Olympic Stadium to witness the torch lighting. And that's how the day is shaping up to be. Join us later at 10 a.m. as we monitor the day's biggest stories from sunrise to sundown. You can also catch One News on Signal Play. Register for a free account at www.signalplay.com so you can stream One News live anytime, anywhere. I'm Charles Lejano. Mask on, wash hands, and stay safe, Philippines. We are One News.